Happy Thanksgiving. Just saying that is an American tradition, and it has been for almost 400 years. Back in December of 1621, the pilgrims got together and celebrated a three-day feast following their first harvest. It had been a very rough year. Almost half of the community had died. But in December, they gathered together for three days with Native American friends to celebrate what God had done and to thank him for his incredible provision. In the years that followed, all across the colonies, people gathered together to give thanks to God for the harvest. President Lincoln was the one who made it a truly American tradition. In 1863, right in the very heart of the American Civil War, after the deadly Battle of Gettysburg, Abraham Lincoln announced that Thanksgiving would become an American institution. Here is a portion of what he wrote in his proclamation. He said, I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. We celebrate Thanksgiving today, not on the last Thursday, but the fourth Thursday of November. That has been the American tradition since 1941, when a proclamation was made that from this time on, Americans would give thanks to God on the fourth Thursday in November. Just days later, our country entered the Second World War after the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Isn't it interesting that Thanksgiving is often associated with some of the most tumultuous and difficult times in all of American history? We are called to thank God not only when things are going well. He gives us a reason to thank Him even when things are falling apart. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. This is what he wrote almost 2,000 years ago to Christians in the city of Thessalonica, individuals who had come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Messiah, whose lives were absolutely changed and transformed by him, but who were also suffering persecution for what they believed. It wasn't popular in their community. The Apostle Paul wrote them, and he said the following. He said, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. My dear friend, whether you are gathered together with your family, or some close friends, or just a couple of you, or if you're sitting alone at the table eating pizza today, God's will for you and for me is that we give thanks he has given us a reason to give thanks because his love for us knows no limits. He has offered us his son and he has done everything for our salvation. He is a good and gracious and merciful God. And for that reason, no matter what may be going on in your life or mine, we can thank and praise him. My prayer for you is that this will be an incredibly special Thanksgiving. My prayer for you is that it will not simply be a time of good food and wonderful conversation, but it will be a time where God speaks into your life and mine in some very powerful ways. Every generation needs to recapture the spirit of Thanksgiving. Our generation especially needs that. These are uncertain times. But even in uncertain times, there is one thing that is absolutely assured, and that is God loved this world so much he gave his only son. And in Jesus, you and I can rejoice today. We can thank him for the little things. We can praise him for the huge gifts. And above all, we come before him with thanksgiving because our God is good and he promises to see us through to the final victory at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And so on this Thanksgiving, we do say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. But we also say, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. God bless you. A blessed and happy Thanksgiving to you and to those you love. In Jesus' name.